Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and you know how much I love making videos about characters with CTPs of Rage. I just can't stop it. Every single new character has to get a CTP of Rage. I gotta make a 10 minute video on it, gotta cash in those YouTube dollars, and I just want to put a CT, I just want 194 CTPs of Rage so I can do an all CTP of Rage video. I'll do, I'll do a Conquest, Alliance Conquest. I'll finally play Alliance Conquest once I have enough CTPs of Rage. But every once in a while, once in a while, I uh, talk about obelisks, which is crazy, I know. And so, yeah, what I decided to do is update, ta-da, update the uh, Marvel Future Fight CTP and obelisk guide for 5.2. Now, I hadn't formally updated this for 5.1, um, but I did add some characters here and there. So you will see bolded characters from both updates. So you're going to see Jean Grey, you're going to see Iceman, but you're also, and Jubilee, and blah, 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 but you're also going to see the new characters from the update. Now, I've also moved around quite a lot of other characters, so there's actually a lot of new bolded lists here, um, and I've tried to reflect what I feel to be uh, the character's usage most frequently and most successfully. So not just who's using what, but how successful it is. So for example, Nick Fury, a lot of characters are using him in PvP now, whether it's Timeline Battle or Alliance Tournament, and he's having quite a bit of success, so that's why I slapped him up there uh, next to Doctor Strange. Now, is Nick Fury a better character than Doctor Strange? No, but Doctor Strange has other options available to him. You can give him an authority, you can give him a rage, so you shouldn't take the listing in terms of 1 to 20 that seriously. I mean, obviously, the better characters are in the first half, but it's not to say that any of the characters in the second half are bad by any means. You know, Molten Man is an amazing character. I just docked him a few points comparatively because he scores really well with an obelisk as well, um, and he's still relatively new, so I'm, I'm not too confident in putting him really, really high up on the list. Another big one that I know a lot of people pick on me for, so I'll just address it really quickly, is Luna Snow. I'm very aware that she can score 100, 100 trillion, billion, gazillion points in ABX with a CTP of Rage. That would be amazing, and she would be number one on this list if there was if there was a cap of 100 trillion gazillion billion. But the cap is 3.5 million. So the fact that she can hit 3.5 million with the CTP of energy, the fact that she can hit 3.5 million with an obelisk, means that it's not as important for her. It's not as necessary. It's the old adage: putting a chainsaw on a chainsaw. You wouldn't glue a chainsaw on top of another chainsaw, would you? Well, sometimes you would, because I did Tier 2 Sharon Rogers, but seriously. Um, so yeah, I don't really want to talk too much about these characters. I bumped up Psylocke. Um, I added Mysterio. I added Rescue, because she wasn't there as well. Um, but yeah, just a lot of new characters. Ant-Man, of course, because of his PvP potential, I think really deserves to be up there, because he's missing uh, Penetration. If we scroll over to the, the left or to the right, um, you will see I added Hydro-Man. I also took away Mysterio, because I think... Um, before I was telling and I was using a CTP of Transcendence or a CTP of Patience on Mysterio and a lot of other people were because Mysterio's skills 1, 2, 4, 5 weren't very strong and Mysterio had low levels of uh, attack, his energy attack stat was low and so uh, that's why uh, people were taking advantage of his summons because that was just a little bit of extra damage you could squeeze out of him but now the way that they've built Mysterio and you can even tell from the uniform they gave him an additional 25% all attack or excuse me 50% all attack because they realized his attack stat was so low so that really reduces the value overall of a CTP of transcendence or patience So apologies to those who um, Have him now with that, but um, I did throw on a CTP of destruction and I've had quite a bit of luck with that he could also be uh, Quite available or quite uh, good with a CTP of destruction as well So I'll actually add him to that list um, It really just depends on whether you're gonna get guard broken or not So that might be a bit more personal preference for some of you for me. I really and it really annoyed me and I really disliked it against Ebony so that's why he's there um, but what I want to focus on more for today is this bottom list this is the obelisk portion of things this is if you don't have a CTP what can you do if you're trying to go for a PvE obelisk if you just want to do world boss and stuff like that and, and um, uh, Shadowland and ABX there's the word uh, if you want to do some hybrid stuff kind of mix and match for PvP and PvE and then if you want to go full PvP so again Bolded characters are new characters that I've added, not necessarily character that, characters that are new to the game, like Bishop is two updates ago now. Um, but on top of that, I thought it would be fun to add more characters to this list, um, possibly characters that could be getting reworks uh, coming up soon, or could be getting buffs or something like that. Um, and then just characters that haven't been on the list, because I do eventually want to fill this list up with this obelisk list, 
up with every character in the game. I don't want to necessarily give every character in the game a CTP recommendation because I think it's a bit misleading and I think some people will end up putting bad CTPs or even as scary as this sounds, good CTPs on really bad characters. But for obelisks, you know, you'll eventually roll an obelisk for every character if you play for long enough. So I wanted to give you that option and give you that information. So we're going to start off with a bit of a shout out, a bit of a love letter to um, uh, Infinity War and Endgame. So I have to just move my uh, keyboard around because I'm standing up. And we're going to put in, um, the first one is going to be Rocket Raccoon. Now Rocket, I do think, needs guard break immunity. He has... He has immunity, um, but it doesn't give him invincibility, doesn't give him super armor, and he does get um, guard broken, although you can rely on his fourth skill iframe. His fifth skill, where Thor comes out now with his endgame uniform, doesn't have it. So I would still personally play it safe for Rocket, and I would go with something that has guard break immunity. So I would put Rocket right here um, on the hybrid list for guard break immunity and a damage proc. I wouldn't really use him for PvP, but I would use him in that situation. Another one would be Nebula. And now for Nebula, we're going to copy the Electro Tag here because we want the Lightning Damage. So you definitely want to hit her up with some Lightning Damage if you can. And then I think uh, Crit Rate and Crit Damage, which is what CR and CD stand for, are also really good options for Nebula to just increase her damage. Again, she does have Dodge. You could try to take advantage of the Dodge for something like PvP, but I just don't think she's going to do very well compared to a lot of these other characters. Um, another one that's going to be, I think, PvE-centric, personally, is Star-Lord, but we'll talk about two builds for him. For Star-Lord, you can definitely go crit rate and crit damage. He does have guaranteed crit rate, I believe, and he has 10% crit damage, but he also has a lot of ignore defense. He has 50% ignore defense by default, so he could be good in some limited um, situations for PvP, and for example, you could counter a Minerva if you encounter a really PvP centered Minerva because he has the type advantage against her and he's got a lot of ignored dodge whereas Minerva has guaranteed dodge and regular dodge um, so I think that's like I think probably that's her best counter in terms of like the B tier list characters so if I were building a Star-Lord for PvP I would give my Star-Lord dodge to try to capitalize because he's got four long iframes and if you slap a character with four long iframes with tons of dodge like Spider-Man they become an absolute headache for something like uh, Conquest and while I personally hate Conquest I know a lot of people still play it some people play it competitively believe it or not and so I think it's a decent suggestion the next one and the last one for uh, Endgame and those kinds of things would be Valkyrie. Now, I don't think uh, Valkyrie is a good character. I wouldn't recommend building her up, but if you just happen to have one of these obelisks lying around and you don't know what to do with it, I would say a dodge crit damage obelisk is probably very good for Valkyrie. She does have a little bit of dodge. It's going to help her sort of stay alive a little bit longer. She also has a dodge leadership if you want to take advantage of that. Um, I was also thinking of HP for her summons. But I don't think the horses are going to stay alive very long to really get um, the the horse stock attached. Little Nas X lyric, nice. Uh, moving on, I wanted to be, uh, give a shout out and do a little bit of a, an homage thing, uh, love to all of the Far From Home villains because you know all of them just got potential but didn't actually get upgrades. So for those of you that want to upgrade the Far From Home villains. I will do my best to help you with that. So starting us off, we have Vulture. Vulture, I think, is just a pretty straightforward uh, damage character. I would definitely uh, recommend building him for something like Shadowland. So just try to pump up his attack, crit damage, crit rate, damage proc. Um, he's not going to wow you. None of his skills are very good for damage proc. He doesn't have chain hit damage. You can't cancel his skills. So it's really just like press one skill, watch the full animation, press another skill, watch the full animation press another skill uh, and so for that reason you just want to maximize his overall damage that he's doing during each of those skills a lot of the other members of the um, sinister six even if they don't have the tags for sinister six you could build them one way or another again they're not going to be amazing characters in pvp and a lot of pvp game modes you can actually control your characters like alliance conquest but it's still a possibility they have some limited value. So for Rhino, you could definitely use Rhino in PvP, or sorry, in PvE, uh, as a regular just crit rate, crit damage, damage proc character for something like Shadowland. But you could definitely also take Rhino into PvP where he can counter the uh, Reflect characters, so he's a really good one-on-one -on -one counter to someone like Jessica Jones or Luke Cage because he has Reflect, Reflect. So he basically ignores Reflect. Yeah, it's, it's weird. So in that case, I would build Rhino for PvP with HP. He has super armor, but he doesn't have guard break immunity, so he needs that. Definitely needs the invincibility. He only has one iframe. And then the HP just to capitalize on his uh, combat stat uh, line. For Kraven, I wouldn't mess with PvP at all because he's just 
pretty weak. Uh, he's got low stats, um, but he does have some all defense down and he does have three iframes. So I think he's nice for PVE with just your standard crit rate, crit damage. Um, even if you only get one of those, like, you know, a crit damage proc, even if it has like snare immunity or something like that, or web immunity. I know some of you guys love the super thematic stuff. So then of course, all of these characters I'm mentioning, Vulture, Rhino, Craven, Lizard, they would all need to get web immunity in addition to a proc and something else like crit rate or crit damage. That might make them too OP against the spiders, but you know, if that's what you really want to do, do it to your heart's content. Enjoy the game. Sandman is very similar to Rhino. I would probably just say crit rate, crit damage. I wrote it over here. That's why I keep looking over here. Um, and then over here, I would say against Sandman, not going to be amazing in PvP. But if you give him HP, maybe he can be pretty annoying against certain teams. And he's not as vulnerable against Reflect because of the fourth skill uh, energy damage. Lizard, on the other hand, I would not risk... Uh, any sort of PvP for him. Now, although Lizard does have a heal, and he does have damage reduction, I believe he has damage reduction. I just dropped my phone, so that's fantastic. Um, because Although he has uh, a heal, and although I think he has damage reduction, he only has two iframes, and they're both pretty short. And because of that, um, no, he has all speed. He has self buffs. Oh yes, he does. He has 25% damage uh, received reduced for 20 seconds when he uses his reptile instinct fifth skill. So even though Lizard does have um, all of those capabilities, and although Lizard does have, there's Lizard right there, and although Lizard does have um, the tier two buff like Captain Marvel, which means he can get six seconds of an invincibility proc, and he can even buff up the, that 25% to be even more and be even longer than 20 seconds, he's got a lot of these synergistic properties but he's not going to be strong enough for timeline battle so you're not going to be able to manually play as lizard and then in conquest he may never use his fifth skill we know that the characters don't do what we want them to do there so it's super risky and i honestly think a bad investment to count on lizard to do five and then do you know the stun on four the iframe on one the iframe on three whatever um you could also give lizard poison damage i'm not going to put a little icon here because i don't have one right now for poison damage i'll put one later um but he only has one skill with poison damage so it's kind of at your own risk you're losing another stat by giving him poison damage when you could have given him crit rate or you could have given him crit damage the last one i want to put on here is miles morales now in miles morales's case i tried him out with lightning damage because his new uniform features that a little bit more with um his i believe fourth skill and one other skill but unfortunately i didn't find it to be effective at all um, and he also has lightning damage i believe on his uniform bonus but yeah, I gave him an obelisk with lightning damage and I was like, yeah, this damage pretty much sucks anyways. Um, and you're not going to want to use Venom Blast very often. You're going to want to use Web Rope um, and Rolling Spider for the all defense down. And actually Web Shot and Backbite actually have pretty good damage as well. So honestly, his fourth skill probably does the least amount of damage. It's got one of the longest animations and it's just kind of awkward. So I would just stick to a regular crit rate, crit damage build for Miles. Just try to maximize his regular DPS. Um, and then from there, you can kind of go with something else. I don't think he has too much value in PvP, although he does have immense damage against villains. I think it's just kind of risky. I know some people do use him um, for timeline battle, so I will put him down here. Actually, I'm going to put him down in the middle row so that I can um, not have to move it over. And then in that case, I would just try to stack his dodge because he doesn't have as much guaranteed dodge, so he doesn't want to get hit, doesn't want to take damage, or he'll die. So with that being said... I am really curious to hear, do you guys like this? Do you want to see me do it live or would you rather me input all this data beforehand and then just talk about it? Additionally, which characters do you want to see added to this list next? I encourage you to choose a group of characters like as guardians or in humans or whoever rather than just you know all the characters i know that but it's more fun and it's more interesting to do like a thematic pair uh, of like 10 or so characters at one time maybe 15 um, rather than just doing a random assortment of 15 characters with the 15 next strongest so hit me up in the comments let me know what you guys think subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me and you want to see me stand more and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you tomorrow take care